Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Rocky here today in a place I've never been before in my entire life. I'm here in, well, not so beautiful Kent, England, and we're at Prince's Golf Club, home of the 1932 Open Championship. For all of you out there, down in the comments, you can tell me who won that 1932 Open. I got something special coming for you. He's American. I've never played Lynx golf. I've only played in the States, up and down the coast, north to south. Never been on turf like this. I've definitely never been in a place like this. Choppy waters are just over this mound right here. I can feel it in my hands. The ground is surprisingly firm. I thought we were driving in here today. It was pouring down rain, buckets coming in sideways. I thought it's gotta be a squishy, squishy mess. Turns out the ground is as firm as the ground is in my home state of Michigan back home where the ground's completely frozen. So there's a couple of things we're gonna talk about today to get you pitching the ball really well and the conditions are really tough like this and you don't wanna get the ball up in the air too much. There's a lot of things that we have to do differently I've learned already in a little bit of time here and I wanna show you a couple of the tips I've picked up so far. One of, the, one of the big questions we always get as golf professionals are the equipment and today we're talking about the wedges and you hear tour players talking about changing bounces and grinds and lofts a lot when they travel to different countries and with different turf conditions. Well, I talked earlier about how firm the turf is here, and I'm gonna talk about how my wedge and your wedge at home can be changed a little bit, or your, your setup can be changed a little bit to make these wedges work the best for you. I've got a 60 degree wedge right here with eight degrees of bounce, which is a, a pretty small number of bounce. You'll, you'll see some players, when they're playing here in the Open Championship or at the Masters where they have really tight surfaces, they'll get down to two or three or four degrees of bounce. So the way we're gonna make this eight degrees of bounce act more like it's three or four or five degree bounces, we're gonna, we're gonna end up leaning the shaft a little bit more forward. And as you can see, as the shaft leans more forward, the leading edge starts to get closer to the ground, which is gonna give us better ball contact and it's gonna help elevate the golf ball with a little bit more spin. If you're playing with a club that's got too much bounce, which means the trailing edge is actually raised, and as I flip it around, it's gonna create more of a bouncing and skipping motion to the wedge instead of a digging motion, which will happen more when you get a sharper leading edge. So it's really important that you're choosing a club that has the right bounce to it, or you have the ability to take that bounce angle and make it a little bit sharper by changing your setup in the shaft position at address. If you come in with a wedge that has too much bounce, you're gonna, you're gonna notice that contact feels a little bit thin because the leading edge isn't able to get underneath the equator of the golf ball as much. So the ball's gonna come out faster. It's gonna be a lot harder to control. And when the ball comes out faster and lower, you're always gonna have issues controlling spin and controlling how you're able to slow the golf ball down around the green. Just to show you here a little bit with the golf ball here, as I, as I demonstrate the effects of the bounce, if I had more bounce and the back edge was raised, the leading edge would engage the golf ball closer to the equator. If I lean the shaft more forward and or have less bounce, I allow the club to enter more below the equator, getting more of the golf ball in the center of the face, improving the spin, and really improving your ability to control the golf ball. In the States, it's important to use the mass of your body, the trunk of your body as the engine of the golf swing to propel your arms. Here, when you get overseas, here in England where the ground is really firm, we've got to keep the club moving. And a lot of players do the exact opposite of that when they get in difficult conditions. They feel like they need to lift the golf ball up into the air. They're more inclined to try to increase the loft of the club by stopping their body and Flipping the, flipping the handle, which sends the face more skyward. As you do that, not only do you bottom out earlier, but the arc ascends earlier, creating an impact that's more like this. It is impossible to control the golf ball when you stop the handle and send that club head. There are three key setup elements that I want you all to try to really get that nice pinch against the turf and trap this golf ball against a nice firm surface. Point number one is we gotta have the shaft leaning forward of the club head. I always like to have the handle in my left hand or my lead hand inside my lead leg, which leads me to my second key point, which is the ball position. When the ball position is more back in our stance, 
it allows the shaft to lean forward more so because I have the handle forward. If I have the ball position too far forward, it's hard to lean the shaft forward without disconnecting my arms from my body, which is a big no-no for any short game shot. So what I'll do is the center of my body where my sternum is at, where my zipper is at, is gonna be the middle of my stance. I want the golf ball to be to the right hand side of center, just on the inside of my right instep. So I'm gonna have the ball about a ball and a half to two balls behind center of my body, located just on the inside of my trail foot, my right instep. Any shot to strike down on it, it's always advantageous to have a little bit more weight forward. In the full swing, our weight shifts us forward. On these short shots where we don't have that type of energy to transfer through rotation, we start with a little extra weight on our lead leg on the outside of the left foot where we'd finish our full swing. So as you look at me standing face on here, I'm 50-50 my feet and to do it correctly, I'll actually take my body and lean myself forward onto my lead leg. I have about 70% of my body's weight on my left foot now and now I'm in a position to strike down into this turf. Now that I've got my setup in the right position with the ball back, the handle forward and my weight forward, now it's all up to the engine of my shot, my engine of my swing, my trunk and my torso to move the handle through my arm. Got my three checkpoints done. Now I turn my trunk. Use those three tips to help you play your best chipping and pitching around tight surfaces on Lynx golf courses like the Prince's here in Kent, England. For all of you out there who are guessing, 1932 Open Champion, none other than Eugenio Sarazini, Gene Sarazin. Don't forget everybody, subscribe to the channel, like and comment, give me your two cents, and I'll give you two cents back.